Way back when this movie was released, a review for 1991 Ski School said it was a brain cell destroying debacle. Another review claimed it was a wretched lesson in how not to make films. And I'll admit, as a kid, I watched it for the juvenile humor and the frequent nudity, not so much for the plot. And I'll admit, it's not really a great film by any means, but it is mindless fun and surprisingly over the years has gained quite a cult following. So let's get into it. Hey, what's up out there, everybody? I'm Anthony DeJoya, and this is Movies Never Say Die, your home for 80s and 90s retro content. And today we're talking Ski School, a early 90s winter sports ranch com with an undeniable 80s vibe to it. The story is your basic cookie cutter template. You got two sections of the resort ski school, one the preppy by the numbers group led by Supreme skier and pretty boy Reed Jansen. Then you get the other, a hard partying group of misfits known as Section 8, led by the free spirit. To Dave Marshak, and these two sections will battle for control of the mountain. Now, it should be of no surprise to anybody that a ski themed ranch com from 91, one that delivers partial nudity before the end credits can even be finished rolling, is going to have some dated references and probably more than a few offensive jokes that certainly wouldn't fly in today's climate. But that's what all of these movies from the era delivered. It's misogynistic, it's a skosh homophobic, and certainly self gratifying. However, none of it's really fueled by mean spiritedness. So, despite some of its material being dated today and uh, even being dated when it was released, it's all for the sake of silly humor, and Ski School delivers plenty of it. What I think is really fun about Ski School is its quick pacing, its relentless humor, and I think the skiing is actually pretty good. And then you get Dean Cameron and Stuart Fratkin's amusing charm. Hello. Hi. I know what you're thinking, but worry not my children because we are employed by, what's his name? Master Race. Master Reed. Master Reed? Master Reed. Master Reed. Sorry. And he asked us to stop by and make sure you Cameron and Frack can bring plenty of energy and tons of their own flavor to these generic character types to make the crude laugh surprisingly effective. I think both have a strong comedic timing. They're really able to riff and improv off one another frequently, and it results in plenty of dumb amusement. I think Fracken as Fitz is able to make the most of a simple sidekick type role, and Cameron is absolutely vibrant as a Shakespeare quoting beer drinking Dave Marshak, who is essentially like a Van Wilder before Van Wilder. A what? For Hecuba. What is Hecuba to him or he to Hecuba that he should weep for her? <laughs> So when you toss all these goofy characters up on the mountains, the result is a lighthearted atmosphere that I think is just perfect for turning your brain off and having fun too. It's a basic story, a basic, basic story with just enough layering to connect the pranks, the sex, the humor, and the skiing. It's nothing overly ambitious, but it does work. It has a tight runtime. It shoots right out of the gate with just neon soaked skiing montages and high energy rock and pop music that lets you know exactly what you're in for for the next 90 minutes. Now, when it comes to ranch comms from this era, there certainly are better ones with more effective and more consistent laughs, but Ski School, I think, certainly does hold its own. Uh, Marshak and his crew pull some absolutely moronic pranks on Reed and his crew of instructors. Uh, Tom Bresnahan as John is sort of the focal character with his coming into his own while his love triangle serves the film a couple of textbook 90s sex scenes, so it's nothing new when it comes to juvenile practical jokes comedies. Regardless of all that, though, Ski School still is able to thrive on the humorous performances from Dean Cameron and Stuart Fracken, who always have a trick up their sleeve and never show a fear of losing their place on the mountains. Plus, like I said earlier, the skiing is actually pretty good, so when this movie isn't flashing skin or dispensing crude adolescent jokes, Ski School is a surprisingly capable skiing movie with professional skiers doing the stunt work and proficient direction, which provides for plenty of visually appealing and addressing adrenaline pumping action, all set to a high spirited soundtrack filled with nostalgic music. So in the end, I'm going to give Ski School a well-earned C+. 
It may not hold up as well today as an adult as it did back when watching as a kid, but few movies really are able to do that. And that wraps up my retro review of Ski School, a mindless romp on the slopes that hasn't aged so well, but still holds up as a delightful time capsule to the raunch comms from that era. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll catch you in my next one. And until then, movies never say die. This is Jack Burton and the Pork Chop Express, and I'm talking to whoever's listening out there. Live a war. You gotta become war. I suppose we have to register you as a lethal weapon. You trying to say Jesus Christ can't hit a curveball?